staying with Daybreak. Keep your views coming at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We'll talk about that in just a bit now. The National Dialogue Committee is expected to give a report on the 26th, but there seems to be some headwinds here. Raila moved jolts by partisan talks. A report writing retreat by members of the National Dialogue Committee ended prematurely yesterday after the opposition side introduced fresh demands, including the scrapping of the housing levy, reduction of VAT on petroleum products, and zero rating of basic food items. But the government side refused to budge. Sifuna, are you introducing fresh demands in this this late in the bipartisan talks? I know Ikuru says there's nothing that's going to come out of these talks. The, the good thing is that, Trevor, you and I have had this conversation over, ever since this uh, debate began, way back in February when we held our meeting at Jivanji Gardens. And we laid out uh, four demands for the <coughs> government to address. And if you are a true, uh, you know, if you bear true... Uh, witness, you will remember that cost of living was an issue from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, if you report that these are fresh demands, I think you're being disingenuous because there's nothing fresh here. We have been saying from the beginning that we <coughs> have to address the cost of living. Even when I was a member of that bipartisan committee, we kept insisting that we first deal with the question of the cost of living. And how do you address the question of cost of living? It is addressing the things we have been discussing here with Honorable Soro, that one of the biggest problems is the increase in taxation on safe fuel, and this is something our, our court agrees with, has a ripple effect. If you have 8% uh, extra on fuel, uh, pushing the prices by 16, 17 <coughs> shillings uh, per litre, then everybody feels the pinch. It is used in transportation, it is used in agriculture. So if somebody comes and says, we need you to repeal uh, the Finance Act, the way that the, uh, the Catholic bishops have said, it is a way of reducing the cost of living. Mm. We have discussed with you here how the housing levy is impacting people's pay slips. Yeah. Even the few coins that people are getting as net salary mm. uh, have been uh, swept away into the housing fund. So if you take away the housing levy, what you're doing is putting money back in the pockets of people. So these are not new demands. I think the media is misreporting this here because we have always spoken about what measures can be taken yeah. to reduce the cost of living. And in our view, the taxation uh, burden, yeah. if you lessen the taxation burden, you are dealing with the question of cost of living. Okay. If you remove these unnecessary levies like the housing levy, yeah. you are reducing the cost of living. So these demands are not new. Uh, and we have taken the position, <laughs> and I'm very happy that... Uh, uh, the leadership of uh, Azimio within these talks have agreed with us. We were with uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, Honorable Eugene Mamalwa in Viga over the weekend. And they also agreed with us because we had told them that as Sifuna, as a senator of Nairobi, I have instructions from the people of Nairobi that in fact if the report does not address itself or speak to the question of cost of living, and specifically UNGA, because I've been appointed as the permanent representative of the people of Kenya, on matters of Ugali. So if the report does not address the question of Unga, yeah. I have been given instructions not to vote in support of that bill or that uh, report when it comes to the floor of parliament. And uh, the leadership of our team there, uh, Honorable Kalonzo, Honorable Eugene, have given an undertaking that in fact they will not even append their signatures on that report, let alone sending it to parliament, okay. if it does not uh, speak to the question of uh, the cost of living. My own party leader, our coalition uh, uh, you know, leader, has also said that he would not append a signature or support a report that does not address the cost of living. Yeah. Because this has to be about the people. Okay. And it doesn't make sense to us that we are the only ones who seem to be uh, getting feedback from the public that things are difficult and that we need to do something as a leadership. Okay. Uh, Honorable Soro, I don't know what feedback you're getting from your residents in South Mugirango. Are they telling you that they're okay? That you can impose more taxes? That they are better off yeah. uh, than they were a few months ago because the feedback I'm getting is totally mm. different. But, but Rosifuna, I don't speak on behalf of the media, but this is the first time we're seeing concrete proposals. Exactly. Like one is scrapping the housing levy. The, that's what Second, I'm saying. There's another one here of reducing VAT on fuel from 16 to 8%. Mm. Now the third one is even more interesting. Slash foreign and domestic travel budget by 30%. Correct. To save 230 billion. There's Correct. a supplementary budget. This is what we're saying, Trevor. This is, we what we're, uh, this is what we're saying, Trevor. Every time we have a conversation on cost of living, they ask us to give alternatives. How can we achieve what you're talking about? So at the point of the talks, when the matter is on the table, is when you give specifics of how you think it can be done. We have said uh, for a long time that if you reduce government expenditure, and I've given examples here, some of which that have, uh, have been criticized over. Uh, for instance, when I said Gashago has no business advertising for lobsters in his office, we have said if you reduce all these international trips, Osoro has just told us here that he has just come back from Zambia. I don't know what he was going, you don't need to go to Zambia to know the landmass of that. 
<laughs> you can do a desktop search and do the size of, uh, of, of landmass of Zambia. So these are now, this is the point at which you give specifics of how you would do it. You know, and that is what is coming up. So it is nothing new. Okay. You know, Trevor, no, 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 yes. because I've always maintained that yes. uh, the bomber stocks are useless stocks. In fact, it is, in my, my view, an indictment of KK administration that they don't believe actually they won this election fairly and squarely because they are conversing with people they believe or they claim to have defeated in 2022. And some of the things that actually are being proposed here do not need talks. This requires policy direction, administrative decision to be made. What uh, Weshimio here are doing is they are running away from debating issues on the floor of the house and taking them to, to hotels and bombers, bombers of Kenya. I think when, when, for example, the finance bill was debated, you know, all parliamentarians are indicted because they ought to have said, okay, what are the people of South Mugirango saying to me? Like Honorable Sifuna has said here, the people of Nairobi have told him, Unga, it's very important. You know, those are issues that should have been debated, not, not, not to become a political conversation, a political talk. I think for me that um, Kenyans are being managed uh, politically by these so-called bomber stocks because some of these issues really are just policy directions that KK administration is unable yeah. to actually implement. In fact, KK administration is running away from their political promises of 2022 and now pretending that it, this bomber stock is what will give them a solution. And unfortunately, I think Azimio are also playing into that game. Okay. Um, so let's talk about just two options, yeah? The demands, number two and number six. Number two is reduce VAT and fuel mm. from 16%. To eight percent. Number six, reduce road maintenance levy charges from f to, to five shillings from eighteen shillings per liter. Are these solid proposals that should actually be considered? Do you Even number eight, could have zero. Let me let me let me let me let me, let me, let me first say, um, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Sifuna, I was in Zambia on a private uh, <laughs> capacity, <laughs> capacity, not as a <laughs> as a member of parliament. I just went there to visit my friends. But that aside, <laughs> so you don't use any. In the, in the, <laughs> In the process, you established land mass. Also. And in that process, I actually established that land mass there is, is quite massive. <laughs> but having said that, um, I, I think Azimio is playing uh, populism politics, and as they always do, because um, the, the issues that have been have been raised here, some of them are so impractical. Uh, like number five, they are demanding that you decongest. You're telling the government that you need to decongest prison from 66,000 to establish capacity of 32,000 to save 18 billion annually. I mean, really. You're telling government, you're telling the government that now go and decongest. Where do you want to take the prisoners? For example, you want the government to direct courts that today don't take prisoners, don't admit any person or something. It's not really practical. Is that really reasonable? But, 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 but we will explain. It's, it's, we will explain. So yeah. Exactly. They will say, Mm -hmm. Do more prisons. No. And then they'll not say. Necessarily. Not necessarily, Osoro. Or no. just release the petty. Okay. You see, the, the bulk release of the those. Yes, the bulk of those people are petty offenders. Do you mm -hmm. know Osoro, for then instance? Tomorrow, I know. It is very true. As, uh, Let me give you an yes. example here at uh, Industrial Area Prison. Mm -hmm. Do you know that we still have young people who are arrested mm -hmm. during the protests, mm -hmm. rotting there in that uh, particular jail? At our cost. Yeah, at, a, at the cost of a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So these proposals are yeah. not unreasonable. They're not practical. We have, we have thought these things through because okay, that thinking aside, is what we do. Because that aside, we know it's you, a handicap you, on your I, side. I, I think we will explained. think for you. <laughs> <laughs> we will think for you, then give you this problem. But it's not really. It, it, you really can't just say that it's the entire 66,000. Yeah, we don't expect you to understand. We, 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 Osoro, it is not, Osoro, you, know, you are now starting to think it will be painful for you. Let us think it for can't you, be Osoro. For me. Let us think for you, and then we will tell you how it will Osoro, work. I, I Allow us to think I, for I, you. I practice law, and I've seen <laughs> and I've seen some of the cases that actually are costing Kenyans money, taxpayers' money. Do not need to go to jail. For example, Mama Changa, Mama Busa, yeah. you know, Suji petty offenders. Do you, Those are you, guys. Do you, need, do you need bipartisan or, talks? And, and th that will lead me to that. Do you need bipartisan talks? Where else were we going to get you? Push a reduction from Where else were we get, going to get you? You have the floor of the house. And that is what we are saying. That's what we are saying. Most of these proposals are populist proposals. No, 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 no. Because, Actually, no, let me, let me explain. These are things that you can raise in the process of, you know, uh, formulation of the law within 
parliament. These are things that can be debated in the floor of the house. But they have no such capacity. They want to play populism in the public gallery to display that they are really working very hard. But none of them they has prost anything. I'm sorry, yeah. No, that, that, that is true. His point is because, let me tell you, let me tell you, we've had, we've had but one you month. you have the majority? We have, we've had, do it yourself? Correct. We've had one month from with all this pressure. <clears throat> but that is, the their you know, they keep saying that to hear from the public. When Sifuna meets an ODM supporter, for instance, what do you expect that supporter to tell him? No, I, He'll tell him what he wants to hear. <laughs> that, you know, Mwishmu, you're doing a good thing. You know, the same thing I'll be told myself when I go to the village. That, you know, you guys are doing a good if thing because they want to tell us what they want to hear. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. uh, this just, element just, of just, using, this is claiming that you, 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 people hear you, I, like, I listen you to the people. Oh. Like, it, it, I mean, you're, the, you're not the only people who have... Just one minute. Just one minute. Just one minute, Let me come back. Let me do this, Trevor. I think you need to allow Trevor to ask you the question that he's asking. These are not populist proposals. They are common sense proposals. But they have not occurred to you because unfortunately in your government, <laughs> common sense is rare. If this is something that should just be done as a matter of course, why have you not done it? You have had the numbers. Uh, we have had this conversation here. You know, sometimes I, I, even, I even hesitate to come to this show because I feel like I've said everything they need to, they, they, they need to be said. <laughs> if indeed you are saying we should do these things in parliament, why was, was I elected to convince Osoro, who has the majority, to do the right thing. It should come to you as a matter of course that people are suffering, and if you want to do or deal with the question of the cost of living, these are practical things that you can do. If that does not occur to you, and Trevor, I'll, I'll give the best example of why debate in the House does not work. This question of IEBC, for instance, was debated in the, in the National Assembly. It came to the Senate. Every single thing that needed to be said was said on the floor, I'll quote, mm. because I did it myself. I explained to these gentlemen why, in a multi-party democratic system, you cannot have one side of uh, the political divide determining the referee on their own. This is common sense. I did not prevail on the floor of the house because, as I told you, we come with ideas, they come with numbers. They are just sitting there, waiting. You just hear them shouting from the back, put the question, put the question. <laughs> and then you are trying there to convince people. And it is very difficult, Trevor. So we have gone full circle. We did it in parliament. They couldn't get it. We tried to convince them even on the finance bill. John so Bad, just a minute, the, 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 just a minute. John Bad <laughs> tried his utmost to try and explain to Osoro and his ilk that you are going to affect the uh, cost of everything if you increase fuel by 8%. Osoro was waiting to vote. Put the question. Put the question. Then he comes to this show and tells us that you should come to parliament. Uh, honestly, Trevor. No, but uh, Trevor, Trevor yeah. I will not allow Osoro to get away with this question of populism. Eh? Uh, surely he, he, sh he should be the last person to accuse the ODM side or Azimio of populism. In fact, if there is a populist government, it's the KKK. <laughs> They are the people who put our, our, our grandmothers in wheelbarrows, yeah. our mambogas, and all that because of populism. They sold the idea of wheelbarrow. Now, you cannot lie. I mean, also, this, this, these proposals are very practical. ODM has never been my favorite party, but, um, but I think what they are proposing here are actually very practical. And I think if you are maybe just to sit down as KK admin and say, okay, you know, the, what the, is it? They are very let practical. Him finish, let, him Osoro, finish. let him finish. Okay. If we are to uh, lessen the politics a little bit, yeah. Yeah? let's lessen the politics and let's look at uh, the impact of these things into the, on the lives of Kenyans. You know, you may, you may be happy, you may probably uh, convince us that in 2027 you can even listen to you. But the more, the more you keep on resisting these things now, you know, the more and the most. And that's why you guys, when you went to, to State House, you, you were very honest when you told the president we are actually very unpopular on the ground. Only that your president refuses to accept that. Because the truth for the matter is, things are not looking good on the ground. Okay. I, also, I don't know where you shop, eh? but uh, maybe, maybe you know, because you have got a lot of uh, resources, um, <laughs> you hardly don't know what, what the shelves are. Up. <laughs> but some of us will shop. I can tell you. Now, now is actually a chance to explain no, that. Also, it's the second you, time you grew up on my, my budget of last year is not the budget of this year. Yeah. This is a practical, practical reality. <laughs> so, but you know, because a man who can take a private trip to Zambia. <laughs> Maybe it does not feel that. And, and also, let, let, let's ask you a very practical question, okay? You've said that this is practical. Look at number six. Reduce the road maintenance levy charge to five shillings from 18 shillings. <coughs> that automatically knocks out 13 shillings. The current price that, 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 that is very true. That, wait, yeah. wait, wait. The mm. current price of fuel right now is 211. Mm -hmm. If that move was done, that move alone, mm. then the price would be 190. That I agree. Is that practical? Uh, so why didn't... Let me, let me, let me explain to you. Because of the numbers. After this is done 
if it is done, although it's not going to be done because of through this channel, because uh, mm -hmm. they simply want to, as I said, the proposals may be good, but they are playing populism with them because they are using a wrong channel to push them. I mean, really, they just want them to be on the media and say, you know, we said this. Which is the so correct channel? The, channel? the correct channel is the floor of the house. But the report will Where come to the parliament. The, the, the correct channel. But he knows very well. The report, the report, the report when, they, when a report comes, when a report, it is either adopted or declined, right? Then what happens? Does it become law? It doesn't no, become no, law. No. No. The, the, yeah. Another process, of course, takes effect. Yeah. The other process takes effect, of course, now upon adoption, it now gets to other steps and everything for it to be done. We can hasten this process if you so need yeah. by proposing in the floor of the house. But even as we discuss about number six, reduce road maintenance levy uh, to five shillings from 18 uh, shillings per liter. That is good. Then next time, it is Sifuna who will say the road that passes through his, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, his village, people can't even access their markets. You we know, have we been like be that for this. 30 years, so uh, what we want? And stuff to, like, uh, let me see, tell you, can these I speak, things, can these I things speak are intertwined. The, yeah. These things are intertwined. So even as you look at... movies done, it will affect... The, the, the yeah, the other things that will be affected. I mean, you, you, you've been on record here on TV, claiming, you know, saying, uh, Jackie is leaking. You know, it needs... But he's clear. Which is true. Was leaking. We, exactly. In fact, there's a committee It needs resources. It needs resources to be redone. You see, we need to realize this. Kenyans need to know this. Number one, our development and our progress as a country is contributory. It is through their taxes. It is through their contributions. Okay. There are no, there is nothing. There is, there is no room somewhere that government goes and makes money and then yeah. decides this is the channel to move. Okay. <clears throat> when you affect one angle, there is an angle that will be affected. When you affect, like they well put it, when the fuel is affected, of course. Mwanainchi feels the pinch. That is true. But again, when other elements are stopped, like when you reduce such kind of levy from uh, the road maintenance levy, yeah. then tomorrow you'll complain about potholes in okay. your road. You see, so there are other things that you need. And you also need to progress with the societal, you know, econ okay. exactly. You see, uh, Trevor, first yes. of all, uh, all of us agree that uh, we need to contribute to the progress of the country. Nobody has refused. Mm. Uh, they say death and taxes are the only things that are certain in, in this life. Uh, but you see, it is disingenuous for Soro to threaten us that if we reduce this, we will not have roads. <laughs> Why is he not saying that if we reduce that road maintenance levy, <laughs> the seafood in Gashagwa's office will disappear? The travel allowances will disappear. Why ha does it have to be roads? No, but, 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 but that was already done finish. by the even in the let fight. Let me finish. Let me finish. Mm. Osoro, there is something I have explained here on the hierarchy of needs. Uh, if you ask the people who use that road that you are referring to, that goes to my rural home, whether uh, if the, you know, that road has been like that in that state for 30 years, we have not died. <laughs> we can continue living with that road the way it is for as long as we have food in our stomachs. The hierarchy of needs requires that you deal first of all with the basic needs. Food is number one on that pyramid. Of Subsidy. Form. So you cannot tell us that, oh, uh, if we remove that road maintenance levy, the road maintenance levy is so high, it is removing resources from people's pockets, determining or reducing their ability to buy food for their families. What we want you to do is to uh, uh, prioritize people's ability to feed their families, people's ability to take their children to school. So don't tell us about roads and potholes. Once you are cleared uh, <coughs> this, uh, the pain that you have imposed right now and people are unable to survive, talk to us about the other things. If you explain to Kenyans, you see, uh, the problem with you, I suspect, is that you think Kenyans are fools. Even uh, <laughs> when the president repeats that, oh, Wajinga Walisha Kenya, he, I suspect he knows or he, he believes that there are still some fools. No, 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 you see, you see <laughs> that, let me tell you. Let no, me wait. <laughs> that we can't see when he's trying to be clever and when his government is trying to be clever and when you're trying to be clever. Also, people know what priorities the government should be having. And the things that you are doing are not correct in terms of the prioritization of the problems of, of Kenyans. Just listen to them. Listen to Kenyans and understand that if we are unable to feed our families, we can't do anything else. Stop these stories you're telling us. And uh, one of the biggest observations from these talks, and you should read it there in the newspaper, uh, Trevor, the tragedy for Mamamboga and uh, the Boda Boda person is that they were told they were the ones going to form government. Mm. Right now, the reason these people don't want to do these things is that the real people who formed government are uh, uh, the, the two shareholders, the two main shareholders from Rift Valley and uh, Central, and an institution called the IMF. They never spoke. When Ruto was campaigning, he never mentioned the IMF. <clears throat> Or World Bank. Or World Bank. 
those who are not shareholders in this government, it was Mama Mboga, Mutua Boda, and uh, <laughs> Will the, the wheelbarrow pushers. But now we are being told these levies cannot come down because of our commitments with the IMF. Yeah. I am asking myself, what about the commitments mm. that you made to Kenyans? Mm. Where do they rank in the hierarchy of commitments? Should in the commitments you made to your own people that allowed them to put you in office, should in they rank before any other commitments that you've made? Yep. And the commitments you make with uh, institutions such as the IMF should be in the best interest of the people. Okay. As I said, you cannot bleed a leech to fatten a, a heifer. The IMF will be okay, even okay. if they don't receive their payment. But what about the people? All right, so you want to respond now? No, you see, we do not... It's, it's, it's funny, it's ironical that we all want to live in a world class. We want to live in a very developed country. No, we just want to live. No, wait. <laughs> we just want <laughs> to live. We all dream to be, you know, good, those developed countries also? and everything. But we still want to operate and reason, uh, like, uh, and operate like we used to operate 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Like, you want good roads, you're complaining that, you know, this, we've been living this way for 30 years. <clears throat> you know, you want that Mamamboga from your village to take her goods to the market, to access good roads to the market. But you are telling her, don't contribute for the road maintenance, but somehow some miracle will happen and that road will be done. I mean, really. Okay. It, it, at some point, oh, sorry, we've you're got... Missing, you're, oh, sorry, you're missing, that, missing the point. No, no, no. You're no, missing no. the point. I've missed the point as well. Oh, you're missing the point. The question, I think, what uh, Senator Sifuna has put on the table is what are really the priorities of this government that will make Kenyans comfortable so that even if you are told today, contribute to the road, eh, you are comfortable. Today. That is For example, I'm... for me, I used to think of Louis are the ones who eat a lot of garlic. Kumbia, I didn't know that in uh, KCC, we... it's actually one of the most staple. Unga, <laughs> ugali. <laughs> 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 So if you, if you tell Kenyans today, Anna Unga, Ugali, and then you keep telling us you contribute to the Barabara, you know, those are far-fetched uh, things. So I think the question really is, Osoro, and uh, we want to help you, uh, you know, succeed. Because a successful government is a successful country and a successful people. I think you need to get your priorities right as this government. And in, you need to go back to what you actually promised Kenyans in 2022. You say that you will do this, by due date you will do this. Now you are shifting the goalposts. At the very least, Osoro, then at least come and explain to us why certain things are not working. Correct. Because you are the one who says... You are explaining. You don't have to listen. Osoro, yeah. you are not. Yeah. Even now you're not you are not even, <laughs> not. even now you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Even here, you are struggling to do that. Please come on. So, at least explain to us so that Kenyans can understand. You know, you are, it's not too late to learn. <laughs> or at least, you know, I think I, I was thinking of actually buying your, your president and even some people like you are called um, uh, Nini. Um, what is this? The, the political genius of Abraham Lincoln, team of rivals. You see, if you go back to that, if you read that book, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln was never uh, popular. He was a Republican, but was not really the most popular president in America at that time. But when he won the election, yeah, yeah. he actually considered that well, there are some Democrats who are very are good, are very good policies on health. On so, you also need to, to listen from your, uh, your 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 colleague. After all, you are all in government uh, just until last year. So you had the handshake government. So all of you are in government. So all of you have got ideas on how to fix this. So listen to each other. Okay. You know, just right. stop, you know what, what happens? Stop uh, making us pawns with these no, uh, talks. And let me tell you, <laughs> what, what, the really big problem that bedevils this country is unnecessary squabbles and antagonistic politics and debating and bringing now you are talking you know well. issues over everything and i live in you know we we like raising issues even when they don't really matter let me tell you we had a plan and it's very important for like you said it was just a plan we are actualizing that plan practically and you've seen it but you choose to be pessimist sometimes. People like Dr. Kuru looks at things differently. They choose to look at the glass as half uh, empty, instead of looking at half full. We talked about food security. Are we in that process of making sure that we have food security in this country? Yes, we are. Through what? Through fertilizer. Which Sifuna is lying? It's an old, an old that is number one. Very tired argument. How is this fertilizer thing is an... It is argument also. How tired is it? Because it Osoro, is really true that Osoro, we where, where were, did during the, the free fertilizer go? No, no, no. During the where did, during you, the, where did you distribute the free fertilizer? It is actually your word that it is free fertilizer. But it was free. It is the word of the Russian government. It's not my word. It, it wasn't. But can you even? Osoro, Osoro, are you, you in Kenya? That? Are you not in Kenya? 
not just in but Kenya. But the Russians, the Russians said the fertilizers were free. Yeah. So the CS of agriculture is, is, was there is, receiving no, the no, no, free No, no, no. What, what, what Sifuna is doing, we need, we, need, we need to separate issues. What the fertilizer that came from some, I mean, uh, Russia was a sample. Ah. <laughs> was a sample then, and it was very minimal. As to, you can't really compare. Remember, I, I think we should just end the show and go. <laughs> even, even your viewers at home, I'm sure we are doing them a great disservice. No, no, no. You but know, it is true. You know, we need to be factual. That's why I say the problem with this country is antagonistic politics. You do this, yeah. they bring this. Okay. You do this, they bring this. Clever. Let me tell you. Your, your point was there's a when there's president like exactly oh. because. We even Which had of us before. exactly during the, pres the, 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 the president uh, state of the nation address. Yes. He quoted some farmers from Tanzania and some other parts of the country. Yeah. Really displaying excitement to the yields that they are yet to receive, uh, because they've actually seen that in another one or two months they'll, yeah. their yields will grow. They'll be a bumper harvest. They'll be okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. That is a positive thing towards food security. Okay. That story should be given out. When you talk about the housing thing and the element of, uh, you know, making sure that, because you say that we focus on the basics, and we all know that basics are the food, shelter, and the clothing. So if we, we are working on the two perfectly well, we've also, uh, we are pushing to make sure that we do not allow, you know, the importation of second-hand clothes as much so that we are able to grow our textile, uh, local textile industry. That is being worked on. Okay. Talk about the other successes. You know, we do not want to import fish. Okay. And that was in the Finance Act, even as you complain about the Finance Act that we passed. We've raised taxes on the importation of fish. Yeah. Because it was very ironical that people import fish, yet we've got farmers from, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the lake, uh, within the lake regions that uh, farm fish and they lack, their mar they lack markets because okay. somebody, some I rich person is importing you, fish. Fish from Lake Sukana Such kind of things. out of old age because there's no, there's no industry. So if you were to create, for example, an, a fishing industry in Calocol, you know, you'll be creating more jobs. I think those are the but stories. That, that is what we're doing. Us. That's what we're doing. That is now what we've done. Like, what we, already, we, are, we, are working, we are working on a fish industry in, uh, That's a in, story. in Kisumu. You, no, tell it's us already, what you've it's, done. It's, but you can't tell, you can't no, say, that could tell us what language. you've done. That could take a language, yeah. Tafanya language, uh, we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Soro, you cannot say, by, by the mere admission that I've been admitted to a high school or a university, now I have success. That's a success Until story. We see you graduate with a degree yeah. or certificate. Exactly. No. Then you, what you're supposed to do, you know, when you are, get me admitted in class, what you need to allow do, allow him time. Uh, to and give me time to graduate, yeah, encourage don't, me, don't, tell me you're in the right trajectory. But you don't say you've succeeded. It don't is say a, you have succeeded. Step one is a success. No. Because no. it's an achievement to even go. There are so many. You know, Trevor, yeah. let's, move, let's move this argument further. You know, Osoro, if uh, we are to give you just uh, wise counsel, as you, I, mean, I think we are, we are your seniors, mm. I think you need to accept one thing that there has to be political accountability. The things that you said you will do, stop running away from them. More lies will not help you at the end but of the day. What are the lies? Oh, wait. No, no. You see, oh. Also, what, you see the, I can see the way you are struggling even to explain some of those success stories. And I think Stephen has kept on asking <laughs> you, what's the outcome of what you've said you have done so that you can actually say this is a success story? Uh, let, let me be practical see, so that. Let me be practical words, on that. Let me words, be very practical on that. You even use the words. If we've been able to pass. Plan, no, 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 no. Yeah. If we've if so been able to pass. No, that, that, then you respond. that very point yeah. so that he, he explains mm -hmm. further. When we talk about increasing taxes on the importation of... Uh, fish, for example, isn't that a success story? Hasn't it reduced the importation of fish? When we talk about increased taxes <coughs> on uh, furniture, ready-made furniture that was already flooding the market, isn't that a success story? Don't you think that a person who is making a, a furniture along Jogoro or at some place is now getting market? I mean, isn't that a success story? What, how further do you want to explain, uh, to explain you know, a success story say, other than what would say, uh, increasing VAT on petroleum is a success story, but he's not telling you the negative impact it has on the lives of people. He's not telling you that, uh, uh, you know, by not tackling corruption, because they, they went out to say that actually uh, when we take over government, there'll be nobody to steal money. But some of the first scandals we've seen in this country, right from the edible oil, for example, that is probably the first scandal of, the, of this administration. There is zero accountability on question or explanation on uh, how do we end theft of public money from this administration. Also, he's not telling us, I'd say that we had a plan. That's a success. How can that be a success when there is no outcome? Okay. Really? Uh, Sifuna. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I want to sort of to confirm here, because we have been in, on this show, I think, for a year, uh, just talking about the same things. 
I have heard him say that now the price of wonga. I will focus on that wonga. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> he has said one or one or two months. You know, Trevor. If you remember, at the very beginning, uh, we were told immediately the Bible is put down. It's going to address this question of price of hunger. Hmm. Then there was a time when, when the free fertilizer came, we were told within three or four months the harvest will be ready. Mm -hmm. It will be done. Then uh, Musalia pushed it to six months. Gashagua pushed it to a year. <laughs> Uh, Osoro now today is telling us yeah. one to two months. I wish I don't know who in this administration can give a concrete time frame within which Kenyans can expect the price of unga to go even below what we were we were buying unga by the time we went into the election, which was a hundred shillings, and not for any just some shady brand of uh, unga. No, <laughs> because I have said that food security has a component of preference. That you cannot tell me that now there is a packet of unga at 120, but it is a brand that I have never heard of and I do not recognize. I don't know where it comes from. My household is used to cooking ugali using a certain brand of unga. That brand of unga used to be 100 shillings. It went to 250. If you are telling you are telling me because of your policies it has gone back to 100, I should go to the shelf and find that same brand of unga retailing at 100 shillings. But they are being clever. When the president speaks, he says first he gives a range. And so that you, we are not able to pin him down. He says between 150 and 170. Mm. Then he gives another rider, depending on the brand you buy. He thinks we are fools. He thinks we cannot see through the lies that he's telling us. So Osoro, as a whip in the National Assembly, can you tell the nation here today, is it one month? Is it two months? Can we hold you down to a time when we will go to the supermarkets in this country and find Unga retailing at 90 shillings or 70 shillings like you promised? <laughs> It, it, you know, is there a time frame? It is. It the, is. It the, is the, let me so tell you. The it came. is. It is wrong for um, uh, Sifuna and Dr. Ekuru to imagine that and it, they know it's facts within their knowledge that it is not the government that comes out to declare that you know today the price will be seventy. What the government? No, he did it. No, 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 no. It is not the government. Ruto that, said government it himself. We live in a free market. Yeah. Our, the, the free market, the, the market is controlled. The other parameters that control market is the element of the supply, you know, and the need and everything that comes with it. When the supply is hamper, for example, like we said, when <coughs> after the uh, uh, after the harvest, after the harvest, we'll get to know. You know, there will be a surplus of maize across. That automatically will reduce the price of unga. It's not really the government that... Yeah, there, give me one never. single government, including the developed countries, where a government comes and says, you know, today or tomorrow, the price of this particular commodity, yeah. this, uh, this unga, you know, so will, let will me be 100 shillings. Let me it's not practical. Sifuna should be honest enough and know that. Yeah. <laughs> these things is a supply and demand. Okay. So what we are trying to push is to push that this, the, 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 the demand you know, for the goods becomes a little bit competitive yeah. in terms of, based on the supply. Okay. Because there will be a bumper fest across yeah. the country. Maize will be all over. It will be easily accessible. Now okay. people will reduce their prices. And eventually the price of hunger will go down. So you're looking for an equilibrium, yes. Yeah, now th this is the point that I was making, that we need honesty in our politics. Mm -hmm. I personally believe that people can vote for you, even if you tell them the truth. You know, you don't have to lie to the public to get into office. As I said, that is what we call obtaining by false pretenses. <laughs> that language that he is employing right now, this Kizungumingi that he's talking about, that is the language I want to hear William Ruto on top of cars during campaigns. He should be saying, we will determine the price of maize uh, uh, based on the market equilibrium of supply and demand. He is the one who said it with his own mouth that immediately he puts down the Bible, the price of maize flour will be 70 shillings. But he said, that. To say that. No, he said he that. He is the one, just let me finish, he is the one who said that the government will be of Mamamboga and uh, what were Boda Boda. He never mentioned the IMF. He should stand in the markets the way that he used to campaign and say, by the way, this government is going to be between me and the IMF. You people are not going to be uh, shareholders in this particular government. Why can't you tell people the truth? Let people um, uh, employ you as the president of the Republic based on actual truth, things that you said with your own mouth. That is not so what this Kizungu that you are coming here, don't say it's water no, under the bridge. So and Kenyans are under the bridge. <laughs> we are drowning in that water under the bridge of sorrow. Get us out of the bridge. <laughs> I think where we have reached, eh? where we have reached, eh? yeah. we need to look at this government as an employee yeah. of the people.
And now that uh, this employee has actually failed to perform based on the contract that was given to it, eh, I think it's time we now invoke Article 1 of the Constitution of Kenya on sovereign power and authority that vests in the people that can exercise directly or indirectly through the elected I agree. representatives. Now, I think for me, maybe it is time for us even to amend that article so that we can be able to fire this government. Because, like Sifuna said, it is the same, same uh, jubilee when I can also read here, and I'm sure they are the ones who came up with the figures, including yeah. even prices. Surely, I mean, how short a memory, how short memory can we possibly be suffering from? I mean, surely, you can forget actually what you guys promised in 2022, just the other day, you know, that you will do this, we'll do that. You know, just own up and say that, okay, we are unable uh, to give you some of the promises we did, yeah. but now we are changing the goalpost. At least explain to us. Yeah. Like I said, if you can't stop lying, at least reduce the lying. Okay. So let me bring up some feedback. There's a lot of feedback coming through. Then I'll <coughs> come to you all now to give us now solutions going forward. Now, Kuro Court says the bipartisan talks are useless process. There are demands here. <laughs> the Kenya Kwanza side is saying they're not going to take those demands. The Azimio side says without those demands being incorporated, then they will not sign that document. Uh -huh. So we'll see what now the solution becomes. <laughs> and let's see what Bob Omabia is saying. My brother Osoro is our leader back home, but clearly defending the indefensible. Osoro's government has delivered zero promises <laughs> since its inception. They should admit that other than the sweet tongue, they have clearly demonstrated that they had no plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lomolimu. Says everyone, including KK MPs, are in agreement that the cost of living is unbearable. The only fact they can neither see nor accept is this sorry state is as a result of having an insensitive Correct. government. Mm -hmm. They've perfected the art of lying about everything, including El Nino. <laughs> 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 and Nixon says, I echo words of one prominent international leader who said, I have no patience for injustice, no tolerance for government incompetence, no sympathy for leaders who fail their citizens. Okay. Taru says that this government is getting its priorities wrong. How do you explain to a hungry person that he needs a good house? <laughs> Duchess La Kenya says the housing levy on salary and the NHIF as a percentage of salary is unjust. This is because pay as you earn in itself is a percentage of a salary. The remaining salary also incurs 16% VAT on purchases. Okay. Branch Emo says this prolonged lack of public updates from bipartisan talks may lead citizens to speculate about potential challenges, disagreements, or complexities in reaching a consensus. It could uh, suggest that negotiations are intricate and require time. Mr. Ten says, indeed, things are tough. I think that's what you wanted to say. But steps that KK government have taken seems to yield fruits at the end. Subsidies are never an option. Mm. They just provide temporary relief. But Ruto's plan to provide long-term relief, e.g. targeting maize production for case of unga. Okay. Bobo Mambia says, my brother Osoro is our leader. I think we've read that earlier on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Injela Lazaro says, the way famous businessmen are being manhandled by the police, secret mm -hmm. squads showing dis desperations to kill economy further, good number of investors running scared and consider relocating to friendly neighborhoods. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the last one. Let's see now. So where do we go from here? <coughs> it seems to be a stalemate. And uh, uh, Dr. Kota, I'll start with you on this because you're mm -hmm. the one in the center there. Mm -hmm. So now the Kenya Kwanzaa side says that these are fresh demands mm -hmm. and they might not append, they might not accept them. As mm -hmm. in your side says, without those demands, mm -hmm. they are not signing this document. So where do we go from here? For me, I, I don't see this as, as fresh demands. These are issues that have been on the table for quite some time. And like I, I've, I maintain that some of these issues are policy measures that actually a government of the day can actually, uh, you know, do. It doesn't have to dupe Kenyans that let's go for, uh, you know, a conversation or dialogue. Uh, and by the way, if truly they wanted these talks to be national, uh, they should not describe them as bipartisan and between the two, the two, the, the two, the two parties, Azimio and, and KK. Um, these issues, in my view, are very reasonable, and the the issues that actually affect the uh, the ordinary Monanchi. And I think it just uh, uh, suggests that a government of the day is unable to fix the problems of, of, of the people. So they want to create this political dialogue, political opportunity uh, to try and dupe Kenyans that oh, you know, uh, we disagreed because because Azimio did, did not sign up to this, so we are not able to do it. But nothing has stopped them. The, the, government, the government of Kenya is the one who proposed 
the finance bill before it was passed. Correct. So they have proposed certain policy decisions. The, the president has got presidential decree. He can do some of these things. So now they want to use Azimio as an excuse yeah. not to, to implement some of these issues by, by calling uh, fresh demands. I don't know whether it's media or whoever it's suggesting it, but these issues are not fresh. Yeah, but now if they recall the Finance Act, for example, is that an admission of failure? You see, like I think Sifuna said, and I, I've because also... Because you wanted to run for president at some yeah, point. Yes. If you would have won, would you have done such a thing? It would then be you, an admission you, you know, of failure you, on your side. You know one of the... this, then now you're recalling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, laws can be passed. They can be unpopular. They can still be amended. They can be quashed. Uh, they can be, you know, even in courts of law every day, we actually uh, declare certain provisions of the law and constitutional or otherwise. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I think the fundamental problem, in my view, is that... The KK administration, I think, is unable to think. I, I don't know whether they, they lack uh, proper advisors. We have seen also mixed messages coming from some of the, uh, their most senior advisors, like, for example, someone like Devin D. Mm. Then you begin to wonder, honestly, are these people working together? I think if there was, they had factored in some intellectual thinking into, into the passage of any law, looked at, for example, the possible impact of that law on the lives of the ordinary Kenyan, then you will not put any useless uh, law that you know, for example, will affect. Because let me tell you, you know, let's go back to 2022. And this is where I also fault Azimio. Because now Azimio is using this idea of uh, cost of living. But I do remember, for example, Sifuna's party leader, Raila Molodinga, uh, defended the cost of living at that time when he said that, you know, because of the Ukraine. And in fact, he even insulted Kenyans. He said, he's on record saying that, that the cost of living is not only unique to, to Kenyans. Mm. And he suggested. So all this is just political gimmicks. I think for me, at the end of the day, let's really, if you are proposing a policy or a law, try to think about the possible impact. What is the common good of that law to society? That, for me, is, is what is lacking right now. And that's why KK administration is, is now running Elta Skelter, suggesting all these things. But they ought to have thought, when they ought to have said, from our political promises, we'll do this, we'll do that. They are the same, same people who came with a formula, timelines. So now you're trying to run away from those timelines, and you're not even explaining to Kenyans why you're running away from them. Okay. This, is, this creates a lot of dishonesty okay. in, in our politics. All right. And I really hope that going forward, we can have a conversation where uh, you know, uh, our leadership will actually attract certain truthful men. Mm. No, no, not Honest men. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the real truthful men. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sifuna, what options are we looking at here? Because I see there's a quote also from Raila Odinga saying that I have been silent from commenting on the cost of living crisis facing Kenyans to give time to the bipartisan talks outcome. We will give direction after the talks. Should this fail, then what options are Kenyans? Yeah, now, now, first of all, history will judge all of us by our actions and our utterances. Uh, I think uh, Kenyans forget very fast. We began this process out of a call from Ruto himself. He addressed uh, the nation from State House and said, uh, come let us talk about uh, these grievances that you're bringing to the table. We have been accused variously of uh, prioritizing our own needs. But what Kenyans don't understand is that we have a, very, a government that is very good at PR. Would you know, Trevor, that it is the government side, it's the KK side, that came to the table with proposals about creating offices, about regularizing uh, mm. Musalia's office and mm. creating this office that they call mm. Office of uh, Official Opposition Leader. But when they speak out there, they say it is uh, Kina Sifuna, it's Kina Raila who want uh, mm. offices. For us, we have said from the beginning that we are going to prioritize the needs of the people, that in fact, for as long as uh, you are not addressing yourselves to the uh, sort of uh, the, 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 the pain points that the the people are experiencing, we have no business in it. We have given this process a chance. We have given our, our best to this particular process. No one can ever blame us if it fails. And it will not fail because of an office. It will not fail. Nobody in Nazimu is interested in those offices these people are proposing. It will fail because a government that is lacks compassion, that is refusing to listen to the cries of their own people, like a shepherd who does not listen to the cries of, uh, of, of his flock, is not a good shepherd. So what we're saying is this. For us, we want humanity in government. We want compassion. Yes, you have all these grand plans that you, are, uh, you want to implement, but they should not come at a cost uh, so grave as the one that we are seeing right now. Uh, people's personal uh, possessions and belongings being searched at the airport, looking for 10 shillings, 20 shillings in taxation just because somebody bought a new watch or, a, or is bringing a gift to their mm -hmm. family of a bottle of perfume. It is actually very embarrassing. So we are saying, for us, we have made these talks about the people. 
And I have made a commitment myself as a leader that if the report does not address those pain points, I have no business in it. And we, we had come a certain uh, road, Trevor, you should remember. Uh, we were in the streets uh, with protests because it is a constitutional <coughs> tool that you can use to, uh, you know, express your disaffection. Mm. If indeed the, the, the talks collapse, we are not short of options. This document is one of the best documents and Dr. Okot was uh, one of the people, the architects. Those are the few things that I can give you credit for. <laughs> uh, not many, <laughs> but it is one of the few things because I know the role that you play. This is a very good document. It has options for Kenyans. You have heard him uh, invoking or, or proposing that we invoke Article 1 as Kenyans and exercise sovereignty on our own because it is clear that the people who ended up in power ended up in power, first of all, by false pretenses and then <laughs> by finding themselves, it's like that total is that finds itself on top of a post. After it is there, it doesn't know what to do because it has no ability or capacity to do anything about it. And listen to the language. The language has changed. Kenyans must notice the change of language and the change of tone. <coughs> if you see and hear the things that... Uh, the government economic advisor D is telling Kenyans, the way he talks to Kenyans very carelessly, like, uh, yes, uh, you people were foolish to believe politicians. Mm. He's calling Kenyans who put his boss in office foolish for, po for believing his boss. And giving and, him a job. And to giving him a job. To, but <laughs> it is true. If you believe a charlatan, somebody who has a history of lying to you, the, the problem really is yours. They say, if you fool me once, <laughs> eh, shame on me. If you fool, uh, fool me twice, it is you. The problem is with you. So people who have a history, you should examine. Everybody who's running in of, for office, if they have a history of lying, don't expect them to change because of uh, power. As they say, power does not change you. It reveals who you are. Okay. So this is who William Ruto is. So He's, for you, this is the make or break? This is the make or break. I have said, I have told you, Trevor, yeah. the people of Nairobi, even when I was in that bipartisan uh, uh, committee in the initial stages, my job was only one. I did not go there with clever English, no. I went there as an expert on Ugali. <laughs> so for as long as uh, people were not interested in discussing that Ugali, yeah. the people of Nairobi said, Zivuna, get away from those things. Okay. They are wasting our time. By the okay. way, I want also to, to answer this question. Eh? I don't know what, how we will defend government, especially the demolitions in um the housing demolitions in uh, Mavoko. So how do you explain that in the context of you guys pushing for housing levy? <laughs> and the win-win that you were mm -hmm. talking about yeah. during the... Perhaps campaign. you can also respond that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Be, um, number one, Sifuna have received a, a message that uh, from a Kenyan that they are buying Unga at 155. Where? Which, which brand? Yeah. Let, let him tell us so that we all go there. They're buying Unga, and, and in fact, it was very particular, <laughs> unlike... The last regime we were buying at 200. No, it's I okay. Didn't know. It's okay. Let, no, let him tell us where because we will all go and shop there. But how much do you buy? I am buying Unga at 212. Myself. Exactly. And it was 235. Uh, no, uh, so don't tell me it's 150. So There's a difference between 150 and 212. But there is a reduction for even from your supermarket, <laughs> your up market supermarket. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let me get to this other point. Number one, why did you we have. have in uh, uh, and, yeah. I'll, I'll come to that. Yes, <laughs> I'll come to that. <laughs> but we are, today we are debating the supplementary one. Yeah. that was debated, uh, was uh, tabled yesterday. And in the supplemented one, we have been able to cut um, uh, some uh, budget from uh, some relevant authorities of, from different, different ministries, uh, especially uh, the unjustifiable one, uh, and, uh, that, you know, the hospitality, the office supplies and everything yes, that has been placed here number four. That is very true. And uh, even including Parliament. By the way, Parliament's budget has been slashed. So you will not see um, sub quite, quite substantial amount of money. I really can't know I the think figure, for the Senate is about 500 million. For the Senate is about 500 million. I don't know, for the National Assembly, it should be about 1 billion or something. That will affect uh, travel for members of Parliament. It will have this challenge, or rather these proposals, I mean, it's part of the measures that the government is also... Trevor, there's a question I asked, the which they never so asked. So, that is being They done. slashed Number trouble two. For, for members of parliament, but we, I remember asking a question on, on, on uh, Twitter. Yeah. Why isn't the president also telling us how much of his own travel budget has he slashed yeah. and where is he redirecting that money? Okay. That question has never been answered. Uh, of course, uh, I, when you get an opportunity, perhaps <laughs> with him, he'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> but what I know, but what I know, but what I know, what I know, what I know is that uh, he's also reduced his, uh, uh, you know, foreign missions, unless necessary. <laughs> 
That's not true. Every foreign mission that you've seen him go. Like, for example, let me. Why like do we you have say, ambassadors? Like, like you say, uh, there's something you said about, you know, can we engage and have even a moratorium and everything? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact of a, tra of a mission that he went to engage on Matas roads because you've noticed that most of these roads have stalled. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, really, we are, we are, our pending bill on roads is at 900 billion, by the way. And you know the pending bills, even before we launch other new roads, yeah. that includes uh, Sifuna's road. So it, 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 those Sifuna's are some of the things that, that, that road. Engaging. That road is not in the budget. C forty one. I know the road, but no it's one. not in the budget. It's not there. Okay. There's no money. Fantastic. Okay. There is no money. At least he knows now. There's no now, money let me, for let the me, road. Let me say. Let me say. This, there's another point that you've raised about uh, the Mavoko. Mm. I mean, really. So uh, very painful, by the way. We are. We. we uh, you know very well, Trevor. We are all lawyers here. And my landed senior knows very well, the legal document on land ownership is a title. At least a secondary document before you even get to the primary one. I mean, really, he should be asking the criminals for the arrest of the criminals that, dispo that sold that land. The problem is the double stick, uh, Trevor. I mean, that is it. The problem he is the double stick. Yeah. When Gashago was in Nyandarua, he assured residents of Nyandarua that nobody will demolish your homes. He, he said that. So why, why are the people of Nyandara treated differently than the people of Mavo? Forget, forget Gashagwa, mm. because that one can always be excused on account of other things. <laughs> Ruto, when campaigning, he talked about a win-win situation when it comes to land disputes. That yeah. In fact, if somebody has already put up property and there is a dispute, Said you sit and you discuss yeah. with the yeah. owners yeah. of that property and find a win-win solution. Yeah, that I agree. That, what has changed? You what agree, changed, but everything what cha has changed. What changed is this. His tongue, the same tongue for campaigning is like he has a spare tongue for you. campaigns and when he's... Yeah, let me tell you. Trevor, yeah. Those who are two independent litigants. Government has a lot of no, land. And Osoro knows this. It will have been easy to negotiate with Portland. Yes, and tell them it's a listen. government entity. Exactly. I agree with you. I agree with you. <clears throat> but this issue was in court. Those are two independent litigants. One went to court to seek eviction orders against the other. The other one was raising issues of adverse possession and everything, all those kind of stories. But eventually, they lost. There was an order of eviction. Is, is Did you want, it was a legal, thing, it was a legal process. A story. Did you? No, if, no, no. Somebody is not being destroyed or so but, cannot be a story. And, and like, there was an active case in court. The, 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 the senator is making a very important drug. That yeah. yes, this was a legal process yeah. and the judge yes, was. But, but if they would have gone against that. No, no, no. It's not about going against the court order. We are saying during campaigns, this is what you said to obtain your seat. You said in certain win, situations win. such as that, and by the way, in Portland, just a minute, Osoro, <laughs> just a minute. This is, uh, Portland is a government uh, yes, parastat, parastat, right? Yes. All you needed to do is yes. to honor your campaign promise. Mm. It's like William Ruto has a spare tongue. The one he uses for campaigns and removes <laughs> after he's in state house, and now he changes. Because all he needed to do was to sit down. And by the way, the most interesting thing there <laughs> is that just a few days after the demolitions in Mavoko, Portland put out an advertisement for yes. sale of oh, other no, no, properties. No, not the same. What? Not the same. No, it was not the same. I'm saying they put Others. out an advertisement for sale of other mm. properties. Mm. What was so difficult with mm -hmm. sitting down with these people mm -hmm. and agreeing that, yes, they have the, we have lost the case, yeah. but you already put certain investments there. Can we agree on now you? regularizing your, uh, your, your your position of this particular yes. title. And I am very concerned as a senator of Nairobi because <coughs> we have a similar problem here in Njiru yes. with Kirima's land. We would not want, because if what happened in Mavoko happens in Nairobi, the sort of humanitarian crisis that it would create would be enormous. We want a government that superintends over the welfare of its people. Yeah. We want a compassionate government. Sit down with the landowners, facilitate that process, yeah. and be an aid in resolution of those disputes in a manner that leaves everybody satisfied. The people of Njiru, just like the people in Mavoko, are not disputing that they lost the court case. Mm -hmm. No, but they are saying we have been here our investments, people's life savings, uh, Trevor. Yeah. You see a grader coming in to demolish your house. No, you see, those people will never forgive William Ruto. I can assure that, you. That I agree. It, let me tell you. But you see, this is a government let me tell destroying you. Let me tell you. It is not government. It is, no. it is, it is not government. Portland let me Senate tell you. Is government people one. went to court, you know? Yeah. And by the way, the, the team, the litigants that moved to court, it's not actually the East African Portlands that went to court. It is actually the Yeah, they were guys, respondents. They, they were respondents. Yes. Because these other guys went to court on claims of adverse possession. They lost the case. 
I mean, really, how do you blame government on no, that? No, that one we agree. Mm. Subsequent to that, Osoro, address the subsequent events. And you're saying it is not government demolishing those houses. It is when we went to visit that place, it who, was, did, who did we meet on the road? <laughs> no, but We it, met government on the road. <laughs> you met police? <laughs> that, that is government. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we have to end it there, gentlemen. We run out of time. Thank you so much for taking time. On the wedding symphony, Senator for Nairobi, on the Silvano Sosoro Majority Whip National Assembly, and Dr. Kuro, Court Party Leader, Tadu Alliance. And thank you all for all the feedback that has come through. Have a good morning. Coming back next is Cooking Tips. All right? Bye for now. Osoro. Hey.